Hey everyone, great to be here. Um, thanks for for thanks for coming. I'm hoping you're enjoying Airflow Summit. I know it's coming to a close, um, but yeah, thanks again for coming. I'm excited for this talk. So today I'm going to talk about advanced superset for engineers. Uh, so this talk is really going to focus on some of the kind of less well-known things about superset and really kind of where the future of the product is going, how it's really kind of going to be built for more hackability, more customization, um, and basically all the things that I think open source engineers are, are excited to hear to hear about. So a quick overview of, of the talk that I'll be giving. So I'll start with a really quick tour of Superset for people who haven't seen it. Um, and then that'll be a nice segue into the Superset API, which is not super well known, but it's it's been in kind of rapid development over the last year. And uh, afterwards, I'll showcase kind of uh, a prototypical version controlling workflow with dashboards. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, embedded as well and the future. So where is Superset the project going uh, and how you can contribute? And I think ultimately, you know, open source customization, hacking, contrib contributing is kind of they're all three key components there. Um, so that's going to be the general outline for the talk today. So I'll give a quick kind of intro to myself. I know Marlena already gave one. So my background is in data science. I uh, help build DataQuest. It's an online learning platform for data science. So I'm really, really passionate about helping people learn data skills, spreading data literacy, and generally just kind of making a smarter world um, through data. And it was fun teaching people and, and helping people learn uh, the existing tools, but I got really excited about actually improving the tools themselves, uh, which kind of encouraged me to think about jumping ship and, and joining a, a place that's that's really thinking hard about how to build better data tools, um, especially for average end users, uh, not just kind of data scientists and, and engineers. So currently I'm a senior developer advocate at Preset. I've been here for about a year and a half. Um, and we are basically commercializing Apache Superset and supporting the project. I'm also fortunate to be a committed to the project as well. And that's been, that's been really fun to be, uh, it's my first kind of participation in an Apache project, which is definitely different, um, I would say, and than other open source projects. And so that's been really fun as well. So the quick kind of pitch for Superset, Superset's a modern open source BI platform. Uh, it works with nearly any SQL speaking data engine out there, and it has a large diversity of charts, a ton of charts. And I think if there's just kind of one sentence soundbite, this is probably all you need to know. The subtitle here would be that Superset is incredibly hackable. It's built on uh, modern kind of languages and, and cloud native technologies uh, like Python, React, TypeScript, and it's built to scale really easily through Docker and, and Kubernetes. And it's kind of working slowly towards being a platform instead of just a, a tool. And most importantly, it's really designed to support all of the personas in a data organization. So people that know SQL, people that don't, uh, people who are kind of excited about getting value out of data, and people who just need to look at some dashboards that you know maybe others have created. And so I think this is really the first open source platform that um, is, is really aiming for that. Um, and so that's that's kind of super exciting, and that you know hopefully my background and and the reason I'm working on Superset kind of makes sense here. So how does Preset fit in? Uh, so we're excited to sponsor um, Airflow Summit. Um, our CEO is is Max, who you know I bet some of you at least have heard of. Uh, he's the original creator of Airflow and Superset. Uh, he just can't seem to stop open sourcing powerful data tools. And so Preset essentially takes Superset and adds a multi-workspace and cloud-hosted option on top. And it comes with all the batteries, bells, whistles included. So it just works with the databases that are supported. Um, all of the feature flags that we're comfortable testing in QA are enabled. And it's, um, it's really battle-tested um, with many organizations. So it's really kind of built for scale. Uh, and we also layer on things that a lot of enterprises care about. So SOC 2 compliance, uh, we maintain end user documentation at, at docs.preset.io. So this is for the um, thousands of people in an organization that are creating charts and dashboards, uh, setting up alerts and, and so on. Um, while our open source documentation 
by the community is more focused on engineers and, and DevOps people. And then we also add role-based access control and, and single sign-on. So every workspace here is a superset workspace. Once you're in it, it's the same superset um, that, you know, th for those who have used it, um, it's going to be familiar. Um, so I'll, I'll start with kind of a very quick tour of, of the tool itself. So uh, this is kind of a list of, this is a dashboard list. And this is kind of the, the prototypical dashboard that I always show off. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones. I made it about eight months ago and it actually ships by default with Superset. So it has data from our Slack community. It's snapshotted in time. Uh, and there's two common workflows that will cover, I would say what 90% of people do in Superset. So the first workflow is uh, being able to add a chart without writing any code. So uh, a common workflow is to start with an existing chart. Here I have a big number chart that has weekly threads. We can also start with weekly messages. Um, let's actually do that one instead. So here, uh, without writing any code, we can actually switch um, the chart type. And um, oh, it's fun. Um, OK, well, I'll skip that for now. Um, live demos, right? And uh, so that's kind of like you can switch without having to actually write any code. Uh, and there's also SQL Lab, which I'll showcase real quick. And so if your data is not in the right format, um, what you can do is actually, in this case, I'm joining a bunch of tables and um, generating a result set. So this is going to, I can say this actually as a virtual table. Um, so this is going to be uh, users and channels. So I can save it as a virtual table and then use that to power a chart. So that kind of sets the stage a little bit. And here are kind of the main, I would say, concepts in Superset. Uh, so we have we have a home page. We have data sources. So as I mentioned, pretty much any SQL speaking data source will work. There's virtual and physical data sets, saved queries. There's a SQL IDE, um, charts, dashboards. We have a thin semantic layer that's kind of expanding. Um, things like filters, alerts, reports, role level security. And so pr currently, uh, most of these can be accessed from the API, uh, which is super exciting. And so I'll kind of give a quick demo of the API in, in use. Uh, so here I'm just using, you know, I'm, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm a data scientist, so I love my notebooks and it's a great way to show um, kind of changing state of data uh, with code. So here I basically have Superset running at localhost 9000, and that's what's gonna enable us to access the API. So we have slash API slash V1. Over time, we'll add V2 and, and so on. Um, so first, I get a token, uh, which you can see right here. Um, and you know, usually it shouldn't show tokens to the public, but this is just running on my local computer. Um, I add this authorization bearer. And then from here, I can actually get, so we're pinging the API slash V1 chart endpoint. Um, so this is getting, uh, this is a get request. So this is going to get all of the charts uh, and with some pagination. Um, that's that's currently running. So if we head over to to here, it's gonna it's gonna return. It's the API is basically giving me the same data that's shown here. And the reason that that's that's really kind of trivial in many ways, or kind of I think built into the nature of Superset, is that ultimately all, everything the Superset stores and knows about lives in a database. So when you're running it locally, um, just natively in development mode you know, it lives in SQLite. So we call that the metadata database. And so it's kind of not a big leap to assume that, okay, well, if that data is powering superset, then um, it's accessible via API. So we're basically able to access the state um, that superset is aware of um, and is using to power the tool. And so here we have kind of a list of charts. This is kind of, you know, a classic RESTful interface that you're used to. Um, and then in the results key is actually where you see the information. Uh, so this contains um, a bunch of information on a specific, this is actually all the charts, so we can look at just one. Uh, and then we can see for a given chart, a bunch of information. So the cache timeout, we can change a lot, you know, what's the name of it, uh, as well as the URL, which is really exciting as well. And I think it, it'll kind of hint at some things that I'm hoping to showcase um, later on in the presentation, the owners. So who actually owns this, whether it's public or not, and then the parameters. So this is actually the state of the chart. So this means that you can edit a chart both in Superset and via the API, which is which is really cool. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to showcase real quick is how you can get a list of dashboards. So here, um, all of the dashboards listed here, we're able to get. And dashboards have kind of a many-to-many -many relationship with charts. So each chart can be in multiple dashboards. Dashboard has multiple charts. A dashboard can also have no charts, of course, and a chart can be in no dashboard. So that's kind of the data model. Uh, and so you can imagine using get requests to actually get information from a specific dashboard um, and then kind of iterating and modifying it. The last thing I wanted to showcase here um, is if we go here, so this is a, this is a fun little analysis I did of um, first time and new developers from Free Code Camp. They have this great survey data set. So if you go to edit, you can actually see right here, dashboard properties. So this information right here, pretty much everything you see is more or less available from the API. So here we have the JSON metadata. So this describes things like how do we color um, you know, if we have the same group uh, or label across multiple charts, how do we kind of set them to color in the same exact way? Um, and so if we actually look right here, JSON metadata for a specific dashboard, you'll see that um, that's the same, essentially that's the same data that's, um, that's also in superset. So that gives you a little bit of a taste. And then, you know, for, for the engineers in the audience, who, you know, who this talk is targeted for, I'll get into nitty gritty a little bit. So it follows the open API spec and it is RESTful, uh, which, is, which is awesome. And it's built mostly using Flask App Builder. So for people who don't know, uh, Flask App Builder is a really powerful open source framework for building, as the name suggests, apps using Flask very quickly. Um, and that is what lives under the hood for Superset. It also what it, it kind of essentially enables us to generate routes and generate the API very, very quickly as well as um, support many different authentication providers. Um, the interactive Swagger documentation uh, lives at, at this location. So if you go to, uh, so we have a preview here actually at API slash V1. So if you go to the superset API docs, um, you'll actually see that all the concepts that I mentioned earlier are more or less available via the API with kind of a few exceptions. So there's annotation layers uh, so this is kind of on top of the existing charts and dashboards, how you can annotate the data further. Um, there's charts. So again, classic RESTful interface, right? You can get a list of charts, which is what I did earlier. You can delete a given chart. Um, and Swagger makes it really fun to actually see sample data. CSS templates, uh, dashboards. Again, as I mentioned, right? Like the, the whole goal, um, the design goal for the API is Anything that's doable by an end user should be also doable from the API. We're not completely there yet as a community, but that's kind of where we're marching towards. And if you're interested in learning more, we do have this, this blog post as well. Um, so, so what? We have an API. Why is that actually interesting? So these are kind of things that have all come up from uh, discussions I've had from the community. So a really common use case for an API that people asked about is invalidating cache. So with Superset, there is a thin caching layer that's built in. So if you're showing a dashboard to you know, 50,000 people, 100,000 people, you don't really want the charts to be hammering your database every single time. Uh, we want to be smarter about it. And so there is a thin caching layer exactly for that. However, right now, by default in the UI, you select the number of seconds. Um, and that's kind of how Superset knows to, to ping the data again and basically invalidate the cache. But for certain types of databases and use cases, you actually want to programmatically invalidate the cache upon data refresh. So if you have a very expensive operation or if it's something public facing, uh, you may actually not want an arbitrary number of seconds. You may only want it to change. And so uh, being able to get a given chart's cache key and manually invalidate the chart, uh, the, the chart cache is, um, is super powerful. So you can have an Airflow job, for example, finish um, syncing data into a database and then um, having that having a job that talks to superset. Import export dashboards. Uh, this is still an active development right now. You can do it with YAML, but I believe not with zips. Uh, so by you know with version to export, you can actually export all your data sources, data sets, charts, and dashboards, and then re-import them, which is which is super cool. Create new database um, so you can actually programmatically create a large number of databases, especially important for onboarding uh, people into a new tool or onboarding Superset into a new organization. 
select star. So in the SQL lab, we kind of do this. Um, we, we quickly show a data set preview. Like one of the things that I think a lot of BI tools don't do a good job of is just like showing you what the data looks like. So being able to do that from an API is is super cool uh, without necessarily needing to expose all of the connection details. And of course, things like scheduling new reports. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit about the API. Uh, version, co version control is another really cool thing. I will say, you know, to be honest, it is pretty hacky. And I would say it's more of a push into superset workflow than a pull one. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, the workflow is generally that you're exporting the dashboard from the UI. Um, and, you know, eventually it'd be great to export the dashboard as a zip from uh, from the API itself. But you know, as I mentioned, I think that's still an active development. And then you can import it using the using the shell. So um, the way this would actually work is you could use superset to iterate on a dashboard. Let's say it's a super, super duper important dashboard for an organization or something you're sharing publicly. And you need to iterate on the dashboard in the tool itself, which is still, you know, using the UI is still the best way to actually build a dashboard. Then you can export the dashboard as static files. So as a gzip folder, you can check in those files to GitHub and start the whole classic code review workflow. Um, you can even set up things like, you know, if you're really mature, set up things like deploy previews uh, so people can actually get a sense for what the dashboard looks like. Um, and then you can set up a CI workflow to actually deploy those changes into your superset instance. So I'll kind of give a quick tour of how this works practically. So here uh, we have a list of dashboards here. I made this little test dashboard that's, it's really simple uh, just to kind of showcase, uh, you know, the power of this feature. Uh, we can uh, export this. Um, and so you'll see here it's saved as a, as a GZIP archive. And then what we can do is go here. Um, let's see, saved it yet. Yeah, okay. So we can unzip it. And here you'll notice in the unzip folder, it has, this is the kind of data that we want. So it has the YAML for the data sets themselves, the charts, dashboards on the data sets. This is all the virtual data sets that are needed and some basic metadata on the dashboard itself. And so now uh, Beto um, has done some has done a really cool. Uh, he has a PR up for actually uh, being able to sync sync this dashboard back into Superset from the command line. Um, so what we can do actually is is delete this. This is in the UI, right? So in the UI, we've we've gone ahead and deleted it. Um, here I will sync it. Um, so this is called dashboard export. Um, and it has this kind of 21, 21, 0, 716. Um, I'll just copy it. So it's a little bit easier. So I'll paste it in. Um, and so this is running superset. Uh, so this is from the superset CLI. So superset import dash directory running dash O just to force um, overwriting it if it thinks it's there for some reason. Um, And then, as you see, it's kind of giving you information on, on what happened, on, on the data that's updated, the charts. And then if you hit refresh, we'll see that the dashboard that we created, uh, exported, um, and then deleted from Superset and then re-imported from the command line is now in the exact same shape that it was before. So as I mentioned, it's a little bit hacky, right? This is not... Uh, the type of thing um, that's ready to go right now. It's it does require a little bit more work, but I think this is super powerful for teams and and workflows where you really are, are want to be sensitive about dashboards that are being published and you want it to go through a second interview. And I've seen a lot of people do things like store SQL queries, you know, dot SQL files on GitHub and do all kinds of hacks to use GitHub for really not what it's meant to be, which is um, you know, it's not really meant to be used for this version control workflow for team dashboards. Um, we're hoping that this prototype kind of gets people excited and showcases what the future really could be uh, when you have a BI platform that more natively understands version control. 
So what are the next steps here? Um, I would love to see better export dashboard um, API interface so we can we can do everything I just did without even having to use the UI if we don't want to. Definitely better error messages. And I was playing with that around to a few error messages that we debug. Um, and in general, just some documentation and just a better developer experience. The, the real holy grail that I'm really hoping that we could do uh, in the coming months is to actually uh, implement a full design and UI for version control. So when you are, before you're about to publish a dashboard, it actually goes into kind of a staging or review state. Um, and then it's, and then someone on your team has to maybe review it and approve it. Um, and then that, you know, the state might be synced to Git or somewhere else. So I think that's really my dream and I'm hoping to, to push the community to, to get that working. Um, so we're running a little bit short on time. So the kind of last few features I wanted to showcase, and then we'll go into Q&A, is um, so there's a, there's a ton of nifty experimental feature flags that I highly recommend you, you play with. So if you go to um, resources slash feature flags on, on GitHub, you'll see a ton of the active feature flags. So these are mostly experimental features um, even like the version export thing that I showed you where we exported a gzip uh, full, uh, file of, of kind of the entire state of the dashboard requires this tiny feature flag to be enabled. Um, there's a lot of cool things. Like I know Hugh, I think, worked on this Omnibar prototype, um, kind of like what you know Mac has. So imagine having that in your BI tool. Um, we have thumbnails. We have dashboard level, more kind of complicated RBACs. So being able to do a dashboard level role-based access control is is something that our, our friends um, at Nielsen have been have been spending a lot of time thinking about. So the ton of cool stuff. Um, there's also cross filtering is an active development. There's a prototype that's out. So that's really going to bring Superset to the main stage in terms of its competitiveness with other BI tools that people are, are used to using. Um, personally, one thing I'm really excited about um, is adding custom biz plugins. So uh, I wrote a blog post a few months ago about how we're the community switching and betting heavily on Apache eCharts, uh, which is a really powerful um, Viz framework, especially for Superset. Kind of this has this nice declarative layer, and one of the great things though is that you don't have to use eCharts. You can use any kind of Viz plugin framework that you want, um, and I've linked to kind of this is both on the Apache site, but you can also check out both of these links to see what the process is to actually link, create your own customers plugin and link it into Superset. Um, and Nielsen has done a few blog posts and a meetup from a few months ago on how they actually manage uh, the plugins using, using NPM. Um, and so the, the last few kind of things I wanna talk about, so Superset is a platform, right? So um, the vision really here is how can Superset be more than just a BI tool? but actually uh, be a full-on platform for developing data products. This is really uh, an exciting vision. So imagine having an API for everything. Everything that you can do in the UI, let's make sure you can do it uh, programmatically. Let's kind of integrate it better into to code workflows and version control, highly custom embedded dashboards. Um, so how, how, can you, how can companies build entire products uh, where their end users may not even know that they're using Superset under the hood, right? So kind of almost in it, this exposed version, taking the BI uh, model and completely turning it inside out. Um, easily build applications and data products. So um, what if kind of any chart that you saw, like Slack, Slack's analytics or Stripe analytics, weren't these very bespoke um, React apps, but instead kind of uh, just built on Superset, right, as a platform? And then Viz plugin packs, as I mentioned. So being able to work with the core observable um, library, which has been open sourced, and really any new Viz library that comes out. So last call to action I wanted to mention is, you know, how can you get started with contributing? Um, recently, I'm kind of excited to showcase some of the things that have come from the community. So the Crate DB, Neteza, and Databricks Cloud adapters were were added, and that was kind of a Herculean effort by the community. More, more charts as well. So we recently kind of added a bunch of, of charts and that's for a Viz tool, always important. Um, I've linked here to a blog post I wrote. Uh, you can also search on Google for how to contribute to Apache Superset. Uh, and I'll end here. I'm assuming these slides will be shared later, but I'll end here with some 
some helpful links. You know, follow us on Twitter. I I actually manage our superset uh, social media, so if you ping me there, um, I can also get back to you. Um, and contributing.md, great place to look. Superset.apache.org/docs. Um, and as I mentioned, we also maintain some end-user docs. Um, so that's that's it for my talk. <laughs>